Welcome to the SIBA Lunchbox podcast. Hello, welcome to this special episode of the SIBA Lunchbox podcast. The team once again attended the annual meeting of the British Ecological Society, which took place in December 2022 in the beautiful city of Edinburgh. Please enjoy these short interviews with attendees of the conference. Hello, thank you very much for joining me today. Please can you tell me who you are, where you've come from and what career stage you are at? So I am Francis, Francis Wintram. I am from um, Imperial College London and I am a PhD student specifically focusing on computational arachnology. So I look at spiders and spider webs. Wow, that must be very challenging. People are not often the biggest fan of spiders. I think I am one of the only ecologists that regularly have to put kind of trigger warnings at the start <laughs> of my, my thing saying if you are scared of spiders please leave this talk (laughs) (laughs) yeah how does that come across when you give presentations and (laughs) people appreciate it but they're also sometimes a little like i want to stay i just don't want to watch can i just stay with my eyes closed (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) brilliant and what year are you in and what kind of challenges have you been feeling with your phd what you've been going through so far i so i am in my fourth year now i reckon i think i mean (laughs) Obviously, the big one of this tiny little global I won't pandemic. Ask the big question. Yes, <laughs> that boy. Um, and also, I mean, let's be real burnout in academia is brutal and hits everybody exceptionally hard at any and every time, especially the issue. least convenient times you can possibly find. Um, so, there's been a lot of that. Um, obviously, mental health is also tricky to deal with and then especially with covid as well especially with covid yeah take people whose brains don't necessarily work good and then (laughs) put them into a place where you're actually really in existential threat yep and then see what happens (laughs) when you've got anxiety disorders (laughs) that is challenging so So is this your first time at bes or are you a regular first first time at bes um i've worked with bes before in their summer um, summer school. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, the summer school's amazing. It's absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Um, but yeah, this is my first time at the BES conference. Uh, not my first big conference, but well, not my first conference, but my first big conference. Mm-hmm. There we are. So, have you got any tips for people that might be kind of attending their first big conference? What have you found so far? I know it's only day one, but <laughs> my biggest tip is genuinely don't feel like you have to do everything and fill your days, like. I did did just say this is my first big conference, but even in smaller conferences, just taking the time to allow yourself some space is super, super helpful. All of a sudden it becomes a fun thing where you get to network with people, you get to, you know, engage and you get to kind of make these opportunities, but you can only do that if you've got left yourself enough time. Absolutely. I think, yeah, conferences are great because you meet all these different people and chats around coffee are almost better than the talks Infinitely better. I've already, like... I, I didn't come here looking to, you know, find new people to make papers with, but we've already, I've already been talking with one of my friends about, um, about writing a paper about the accessibility of conference slides for oh, people yeah. with different uh, visual disorders. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so that's really important. It's just the sort of thing that happens when you get a bunch of scientists together in a big place with a bunch of coffee and yeah. maybe a pint later. Always a pint later, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think the best things come out from the random chats and you can't oh, yeah. facilitate that sometimes. No, no, absolutely not. You run into people and you just go, oh, we've been working on the same things for like five years and I never even heard of you. <laughs> and now like we're going to start a lab together. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. So are you presenting at the conference this time around? I am not this time around. I am just here to meet people and kind of have fun. Brilliant. Soak up the atmosphere. Exactly. That sounds good to me. Exactly. Okay, just a couple of fun questions to finish us off then. Uh, yes or no to mince pies? I did have a rogue mince pie um, a few days ago though, which was like a fig. It was like a fig mince pie Ooh, fancy. with with a double cheese oh crust. Goodness. I was oh like, what in the world is this? And it was amazing. So <laughs> yes to mince pies. Okay. And if you had to listen to one Christmas song forever, what would it be? Oh, it's got to be Don't Let the Bells End by The Darkness. Ah, just yes. because it's 
it's hilarious and they're, <laughs> they're just taking the piss the whole time it's brilliant I mean it's a classic it's exactly. brilliant well thank you very much for chatting with us thank today you very much have indeed. a great conference I will and you, t you too So, what's your name, where are you from, and in which state of your career you are right now? So, my name is uh, Lorenzo Maria Iozio, I'm from Rome, Italy, and right now I'm at the last year of my PhD, uh, working on plant intraspecific variability. So, this is a question that we made to all the PhDs, or at least I do, <laughs> to all the PhDs. How's your PhD experience so far? Oh, well, that's a really tough question to answer like that. Um, it's been nice to be able to control my own research uh, for years and to actually get uh, in the, my hands uh, over everything that was concerning it. And it's proving to be a little bit tiring after uh, all these years. And uh, I'm glad it's going to be over soon so I can move on to new research because uh, it's been nice. And uh, whenever I feel something is closing by, I get anxious. I want to do it fast so I can pass to the next one. Cool. Um, just for your information, we all feel the same way. Lost, dread, the pain, but at the end it ends and you get away with your PSD. So, well done. Um, um, what is your research about? So, I'm trying to figure out whether the plants that uh, grow near my home uh, town uh, are different from each other. Uh, of course, that may seem obvious from the species point of view, but I'm looking inside each species. So if different populations that grow uh, not too far from each other uh, are uh, significantly different from each other. I'm trying to figure out if they uh, are different in their traits. Uh, this way um, we can uh, sort of know if the main assumption that I see very often that uh, if you pick a, a point on the map uh, and just grab all the uh, trait measurements all around it, they're going to be the same or not. Uh, because I think that it's uh, very relevant to know if we're picking uh, and clustering together different uh, objects that must be separate because on a life point of view they are different things or not. Or, and we can safely do that without any trouble. Yeah, I guess the plants don't attack you, right? Or, or try to kill you. So, <laughs> yeah, just joking. Um, what? drive you into, into science? Why we, you wanted to become a scientist in the first place? Oh, well, I'm a very curious person. So I've always been one of those people that asks everything and wants to know about the details about things that happen, how they happen. And then I also wanted to share things because uh, I'm one of those people that can start talking about an argument and uh, or a... Uh, any subject, I guess, actually. I have many interests and never stop until people just start going away <laughs> and I follow them. <laughs> but I mean, I'm very enthusiastic. And I mean, to me, science was simply the best way to find people that will listen to me doing something very specific. So I guess that's one reason. Cool, cool. That's nice. I think that, yeah, curiosity is one of the main drivers where we want to become scientists and we want to continue. Um, you said that you have many other interests. Which are they? Oh, well, uh, I'm a very playful person. So uh, I like making jokes all the time. Um, you, you'll find some of my jokes all around the place here. And uh, also uh, I'm interested in arts, in uh, music and uh, in role playing games. Oh, cool. What kind of uh, role-play games? Well, right now I'm all for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but even 3.5 is nice. <laughs> and, but I also try uh, different systems. Uh, every time uh, uh, creativity is involved, I like inventing new words, stories, and bringing everything to life through acting is very nice to me. So, so cool. And I guess that is quite related with science, right? When you just try to piece together all the different things and just create a narrative uh, surrounding it. Yo, that's really cool, actually. Yeah. I need to uh, try uh, role-play Dungeons and, Dragon and Dragons sometimes. Um, let's get with more um, not usual questions. Mm -hmm. So, are you, do you prefer Pokemon or Digimon? Pokemon. Why? 
Oh, because they are the real thing. <laughs> okay, so we'll reply to that. Um, let's see, in the subject of... Oh, yeah, is this your first time at BS? Uh, yeah, it's the first time, uh, but not first time in England, luckily. And I realized uh, a few months ago that I had spent all my time in, during my PhD never going outside my university, apart from due to COVID. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to get to the next biggest conference I can find, and this was it. Uh, so this is everything new, just because I wanted to see what it was like before my project ended. So this is your first big conference, right? Yeah. How are you finding yourself here? Uh, a little overwhelmed. <laughs> like, I didn't expect things to be so far from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the building is quite big. Um, but overall, I really like the, the thing. Uh, all, all the people I'm meeting are really enthusiastic and I, I'm finding many people that want to know about my work, which is something unusual. So it, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> Cool. Um, just for the final question, what will be your um, advice to the future generation of scientists? Well, don't give up. Uh, <laughs> okay, that, that's a good one. <laughs> but apart from that? Well, the thing is that the more uh, I approach science, the more uh, I felt like uh, the best things to discover were already discovered and we were left with uh, just very specific things but the thing is that actually no we're not that good <laughs> we, we don't know a lot of things yeah. and uh, it's nice when you realize you, you don't really know much because then you, you feel like you have so much to do and that sort of brings me joy it, it brings dread to people sometimes but uh, it's a so, sometimes when you get your paper completely crashed by uh, another group, it might be dread. Yeah, but I mean, at least it got published. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, that's communication. It, it, we wouldn't share things with others if we weren't uh, expecting someone to try and pull them down just because they had another argument. And we're constantly doing the same to each other. So. As long as there is not competition involved, which is a thing I don't like, uh, it would be a very help helpful and healthy thing to get some uh, controversy. Uh, also, I'm one of those people that like uh, doing the difficult uh, thing of uh, tackling uh, common assumptions. So that's very scary because a lot of people don't like change and they uh, they won't like what you do but I mean it's fine nobody nobody has ever killed anybody on, over science I think I think I, I may look into that <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect well it was a pleasure to talk with you uh, Lorenzo and hope to see you around cheers thank you joining us on the podcast today. Please can you tell me who you are, what career stage you're at and what you work on? Yes, hi. Uh, very nice to be here. My name is Wiebke. I am a postdoc from Germany, kind of in the mid-career stage then, I guess. And I work on biodiversity monitoring of wild bees using DNA approaches. Ooh, fascinating. And is that something you were always interested in and gradually kind of wove your way into? Or has it been a bit of a wiggly journey? Um, it's been a journey. Um, but it's, it's also been something that I was working towards um, in a way because at the end of my undergrads I realized that I wanted to do DNA work and I also wanted to do work that it has to do with biological conversation um, and then I more or less just took it from there got involved with metabarcoding of pollen, then had a little detour to microbial diversity in, in the desert, uh, but now I really am back with the wild bees and it's really, really such a great work. Brilliant, and so I'm, I'm guessing that involves a lot of field work and lab work? It does involve a lot of lab work, field work is usually done by someone else, um, but also I'm more um, 
I must just spend spending most of my time in front of the screen because I have technicians who do the lab work. Um, but that's also really interesting and challenging because you have to um, manage the people, although you're not in a leadership position yet. So it's it's really it's such a great work. Yeah, the, tri the tricky role of a postdoc yes, where exactly. you have to do lots of different things. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so what are one of the biggest challenges, I suppose, in your area of work? The biggest challenge is, I guess, that is, especially in this project, is we're developing methods and concepts for long-term monitoring, um, but uh, it's the funding for long-term monitoring is just, it's never been there, really. So, um, what, I mean, we're hoping that we get the funding for the long-term monitoring project. It looks quite okay, it, it looks promising, um, but of course there's still this uncertainty um, that you're thinking, okay, I'm developing this to be applied, and maybe it won't. Yeah, it's always the hard part, isn't it? You yeah. have to keep looking at things over the long term so we know yeah. how things are going, but exactly. projects are funded on the very short term. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are your plans in terms of career? What's your next stage? So I am really hoping that, that this project will, will become a thing and um, that it may actually come with a permanent position. Oh, fingers uh, crossed. <laughs> <laughs> just because um, every day I go to work and I'm thankful that I can do the work. Um, and I also like the institute, I like my team, uh, it's um, very inspiring to work with them. So I really hope that I don't have to go find something else again. I know, it's so <laughs> yeah. hard. Yes. Um, so is, your, is this your first time at BES or have you been many times before? Yes, it is. I was going to come last year, but then COVID travel restrictions yeah. uh, meant it's that I had to... very risky last yeah, year. <laughs> yeah, I really had to withdraw my talk and do an online poster instead. So I'm happy that I'm here now. Brilliant. And how do you find the BES um, conference in general? It's super large, which I usually struggle with. Um, I mean, I knew what I was getting myself into, uh, but so far it's been really enjoyable. I had good talks at my poster session. That's I good. got to chair a session today, first time as well, and that went okay as well. You did well. very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so far really enjoying it. Brilliant. And um, so would you give any um, particular tips or advice to students coming on to their first big conference perhaps? I think, although I, I know it's challenging, but not be too nervous. I mean, you're coming here with work that you have done and it's your data and it's your results and you're the expert on this and it's valuable work that you do. Um, so do have the confidence to show off what you got. Brilliant. That's amazing. Thank you so much. It's been Thank great you. talking Thanks to you. Thanks for having me. Um, so, hello, and first of all, who are you, what do you do for a living, and what do you get into science? Hi, I'm, I'm Adam Devinish, I'm based out of uh, Kew, I'm a research fellow, um, and I go into science because the, I, I love to travel and do fieldwork, and science seems like the best platform for me to do that by. So basically free travel, right? Just to do field work outside or... Yeah, I'm, I'm very much the sort of person who likes the, the busman holidays, you know. All my holidays tend to yeah. span very much where I go to do field work and, and that is my biggest motivation. But yeah, um, I just like the inquiring nature of science and that's what keeps me going. Cool. Uh, what Not the pay, of... obviously. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> what, what kind of field work uh, do you do? So I've, the last few years I've worked quite a bit in the Afrotropics, so Ghana, Zambia, Ethiopia looking at like impacts on biodiversity, land use change impacts on biodiversity. Uh, more recently been working with RSPB looking at a new protected area, so looking again biodiversity monitoring in the Kazakh steppe and now I'm looking at completely different grasslands and carbon and fire in Madagascar. So I, I, I have a wide art range of <laughs> interests, um, not, not just one particular taxa. Yeah, it sounds, sounds really cool. So biodiversity in general, not a particular taxa like birds or mammals or amphibians? It, it, I mean, yeah, to think, if I look back on my career, I was, I started off with plants, then I went to insects, looking at invasive insects, ants, I'm, a, I'm a very much a big fan of mimicology, my only taxa I think I know really quite well, and then my last work, been working on bats and birds and afrotropics, and now going back to plants, and uh, hopefully a little bit insects as well, if I can convince the funders to allow me to do that. <laughs> cool, so multidisciplinary. I think that's the only way to go, yeah. really, I mean, more, I guess, Ecology, we have to look through different lenses, right? 
And so only looking at plants or only looking at birds doesn't really give us a full picture. And I think, I think that's the only real way to go nowadays, is to try and at least, if you're not doing it, at least find someone else who's doing yeah, the same yeah. system to, yeah. to start getting these bigger pictures and look at the interactions between yeah. those different groups. And also pay the people you are looking for too, so. <laughs> yeah, true. Very yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so talking about biodiversity, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Ooh. Uh, or plant. It, it can be. Uh, my favorite ant is, a, is an ant called Melissotarsus. Oh, okay. Which is a is a an ant you'll rarely see, and it lives in the stems of many acacia, and it's actually evolved where its middle middle le what set of legs actually pa faces the other way, so it can climb in, in galleries within trees, and it's obligate mutualist with aphids. It actually farms aphids, and so it needs the meat from aphids to survive. So uh, agriculture uh, before humans, basically. Yeah, is that the one that kind of uh, defend uh, acacias against No, no, no. The, these, these are, oh, okay. I think these are definitely more parasitic. I wouldn't say parasitic, but they live in like holes or galleries within acacias. Oh, okay, okay. And more African acacias I know of, but they are just like, really weird. Yeah. So, is your first time at BS? I've been to other BS, never like one of the main BS conferences. I always used to go to like the more specialist in, like invasive species BS. Ah, okay, meetings. the more reduced groups, right? For microcology and stuff like that. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, so, what do you think about the conference so far? Oh, I, mean, I mean, it's great to have a chance to speak to other ecologists and uh, find a time to geek out, and especially given that I kind of, over my postdoc over COVID years, I kind of retreated. I, I went to, actually, I had to go to BS online before, oh, okay. but online conferences don't quite do it for me. Yeah, it's so not, it's not it wasn't the quite the same, yeah, so I didn't yeah, quite count yeah. it. And uh, no, been, no, been watching a talk while just uh, writing on your notebook or just doing emails. Pasta, basically. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not the same as being in person. Yeah. No, um, so yeah, for me, it's it's great. Uh, I, I've, I'm quite keen to to get out and see other ideas. I think this is what, where a lot of my ideas come from. Is when you start speaking to other people and seeing how things work without trying and trying failing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the creative process, right? Of just thinking about theories and uh, yep. hypotheses and experiments. Yeah, cool. Um, if you have to go back in time and find yourself again with uh, 12 years, maybe, um, what kind of advice would you give yourself? Uh, as a scientist, as like, a scientist. Yeah, don't, don't go into science, there's no money there, or there's no future. Or... I mean, there is future and there is money, but <laughs> well, what kind, no, of, that, what kind of advice a... will you give a, 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 young, a, a young scientist? Not just yourself. I, I don't really know. I mean, I don't necessarily regret my uh, decisions enough to, to, to say anything along those lines. I guess focus on finishing stuff up. I, I, I'm one of those ah, terrible no, people no, 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 that no, no, still no, no. Yeah, yeah, has yeah. like papers for my PhD, we, we don't papers like now that. for my last postdoc, like, yeah. papers now for my new position. Um, yeah, but writing papers is focus boring. Up. Yeah. So I want to be one of those people that move to a new position and go, oh, I have no backlog. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that has not been my uh, pattern so far. So that's definitely our Yeah, I think it's uh, kind of the struggle of everyone. It's just, the backlog is such a funny thing. It's like, oh yeah, I've been doing a paper in... in I, for the last five years, so <laughs> I got everything. I got done. I got everything done. I just need to write it down. And, yeah, yeah. No, and I guess nah, also nah, nah. learn to say no at times. Yeah, that's the boring part. Especially <laughs> early on, you feel like you're obliged to say yes to every single opportunity that yeah. comes your way. But not all of them are necessarily going to lead to fruitful yeah. career progression to some extent. But yeah, I can't think of anything else I'd like to say other than uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, for me. cool, perfect. Thanks. That's amazing. Yeah, have fun. <laughs>
is potentially as well? Yeah, so in remote places you end up spending an enormous amount of your time just on logistics. So for example, I've done work in the Canadian Arctic up on Banks Island, north wow. end of Banks Island. I've worked on the yukon Kuskokwim Delta, um, on the coast of Alaska. I've worked on islands off the coast of New Zealand. And in all those places you sort of feel, um, especially at northern Banks Island, you feel like if you make it there and you survive and nobody got injured and you make it back, that was a successful <laughs> real season. If you got data, perfect. Even better. That's, yes, there's <laughs> icing on the cake. Um, but yeah, so there's enormous challenges. Um, you know, things are always different than what you expect them. They differ from year to year. They're unpredictable in various ways. You might show up and suddenly you thought you had all of these plants and something came through and ate everything. And, oh, you know, no. I mean, there's, al there's always challenges with field work, but it's also what makes it fun because you're continuously having to adapt. It's never the way you think it's going to be. Yeah. Always keeps you on your toes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. That's brilliant. So did you always know you wanted to work in science and in this particular area or have you kind um, of wound your way to it? I kind of wound, it was kind of an accident. So I um, originally thought I was interested in science, but like a lot of other people, I thought fuzzy animals. And then it was kind of an accident. There was a, I went to a small college called Bates College in uh, Maine, mm -hmm. and there was a hurricane, and the hurricane knocked over all of these old growth trees. Oh, wow. And uh, one of my professors said, I want to get out there and measure them before the log cutters, because it was on land owned by a paper company, before they come and cut it up. So um, I joined her, and as I was cutting that, I realized I thought this was really fascinating. And they were literally behind us with their, with wow. their <laughs> chainsaws. So we had to work fast. And and then she said, oh, I'm going to go down to Costa Rica to do this work. And she asked somebody else, do you want to come with me? And she said, no, I can't do it. And I piped up, I'll come, I'll speak Spanish. I, you know, I'm going to do so. Um, because I'd lived in Colombia as a teenager. Oh, um, and so uh, I ended up doing sort of pollination work. And that was my first entree into plant ecology. Um, so that was really, really fun. Yeah, wow. So do you have any advice for students perhaps who aren't quite sure what they want to do, but maybe are interested in field work? I would say try everything. So after I had that experience, I also tried doing lab work, um, more physiological ecology, and I realized that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say give it a try. You know, if you can spend a few weeks working on one thing a few weeks working another thing you don't know beforehand what you like um, and and there'll be something there where you just like oh this feels just right for me and it changes over the course of your career too so it's not like that's the only thing you want to do for the rest of your career but at a given stage I've always felt like oh yeah this is what I want to be doing yeah I mean there's so much variety out there and you yeah. don't realize what you can do until you yeah. hear what other people are working on yeah. often and the other thing I would say is jump on opportunities when they come along because um, if you don't somebody else will um, and you never know what you're going to get out of it, even if it's, no, this is definitely not for me. Brilliant. And how are you finding the BES conference? I really like it. So um, I got tired of, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm not, actually, I'm Dutch, but I've, I've been living in the U.S. for quite a while. And, um, you know, the, the ecology conferences are really large. Um, there's some smaller ones, but they've all been canceled because of COVID. So I was really missing going to a smaller conference, and I was already thinking of going here. And then, actually, I got... Um, in touch with a bunch of people I worked with 25 years ago oh, when I was brilliant. a postdoc and we reorganized the session and so it's been really nice it's uh, people are super friendly um, it's a little bit more manageable scale yeah I think that's I like really it. important for us the advice I give to students I say come to the BS it's very friendly it's not too big and scary yes there's not 30 concurrent sessions I mean there's you know six or something it's not a million exactly. so it's really nice I like that's it good. and are you kind of winding down for the holidays now um yes well sort of <laughs> As much as about can. the holidays, yes. No, I'm flying back um, to Alaska in a few days, and yeah. yeah. Any ready. fun holiday traditions? Um, do uh, waffles and ice cream on Christmas oh, Day count? Yes, yes, that sounds amazing. Yes, yes. We're, we've had that as our um, Christmas breakfast ever since Brilliant. the children first demanded it when they were little, and now, of course, we have no choice. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. got to be done. Yes. And one more: if you had to listen to one Christmas song forever, which oh. one would it be? Um, that's really hard. That's tricky. I would probably go with a Nat King Cole song because oh. I can listen to his voice forever. Um, so <laughs> not, um, not the Christmas song. <laughs> that one drives me nuts. Um, it would probably be a classic like Silent Night or um, you know, Beautiful. something like that. Um, um, yeah. I'll Amazing. come, I'll be faithful, something like that. Oh, yeah, I, I'd be very one. boring. But if I had to listen to it forever, it'd better be a classic. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a classic. You've got to deal with it. <laughs> Amazing. It's been so great talking to you today. Thank nice you very much. Thanks, Tara.